Next thing we're going to do is we're gonna draw up a rough sketch, and I mean really rough sketch, of what we think this might look like. Picture, if you will, that this is the top of the truck looking down. This is our fridge. This is where we're gonna mount our goal zero. This is our center console. This is the vehicle battery. And this right here is the solar panel. So we know that we need to run power from here to here to power all our accessories and from here to there to power accessories. So we know that we're gonna have to have power running there to here and then also over here. Along with the power obviously goes the grounds. And then let's say we have our fuse box in here that our power and ground are going to. Now, what we need to do is take a better look at the vehicle and find out, do we have access anywhere on the passenger side for the power to come from the alternator on the engine into the battery and then over to our goal zero this way or do we need to run our power cable along the firewall and then in through that grommet that I showed you earlier down along the floor and then over to the goal zero that way. I'm betting that's probably how we're going to have to go because the heater box or the AC control box is right in this area. I don't believe there's enough room to do that. So for the sake of demonstration we're going to say that this power needs to come to here. But remember the other thing I told you I wanted to do was I wanted to be able to install an Anderson connector along the back of the vehicle and along the front of the vehicle. The front of the vehicle we'll get to a little bit later, but the back of the vehicle we know that we want to have that Anderson connector, let's call that orange, we'll call that right here. So we know that we want a power and a ground to go to that connector. So from there, we would come up along the fender, we would go past the goal zero, out into the engine bay, and around to the battery. The ground is gonna be the exact same thing, off the battery. Down the side of the vehicle, and out through the Anderson connector. Now, you're probably thinking, okay, well that's great. You've got a power that goes from the battery there all the way to the back so I can plug in and I can jump start a vehicle from the back of my truck. Great, what about the goal zero? Well, right in this area, you can actually install a stud, and Blue Sea makes these, it's basically two wires come together and it's got a stud in between that you can slip another wire onto. And then from there, you would have your power come off and go to your goal zero. And your ground come off and go to your, go, go to your goal zero as well. So this is a basic circuit, right? You got powers and grounds running to everywhere that we need to be going. This is a really, really rough draft. Now, we can't just have a wire directly connected to the battery running to the back of the vehicle or to the goal zero because if we got into an impact right there, it's going to pinch these two wires together or worse, pinch the power wire to the body and it's gonna create a fire. So at that point, what we wanna do is we wanna install a circuit breaker like this guy and that's gonna come right up here probably mount to the firewall and be right in that area. So now this entire wire is protected. And because these are input wires to the goal zero, we don't have to worry about this back feeding out. This is only going in, so not out. So this is really the only point that we're gonna to have to have circuit protection on that, on that wire. Now, these wires in the center is a different story. Normally, if this was just a battery back here, you would have to do the same thing. You would need another circuit breaker on this power wire. But because the goal zero has internal circuit breakers and fuses built into it, this is all protected already. 
So that is supplying a fused power, not only to the center console, but it's also applying it to the fridge. So anything that were to happen in here, this is gonna shut off and it's gonna protect those circuits and keep things from burning up. Furthermore, any accessories that we mount off of the center console, say a USB plug here, maybe a USB plug here, looks like we're drawing a Viking, but whatever. And say our overlander up here, maybe the ham radio is gonna live over here. I have no idea where these are gonna go yet. We gotta kinda of get it in there and lay it all out. But this is just for reference. So now we'll have powers going to that. And then we'll also have grounds Obviously all these wires will be running through the in, inside of the console, but you get the idea. We're using a fuse box that is now fusing all the individual circuits for the overlander, the inReach, the USB ports, and anything else that we want to power off that center console. Now where we're going to have to get creative with this build is when we install the Garmin power switch because all of these are controlled in here, or they, they've got power coming directly to the console, we know that we're gonna have backup lights. No, oh, I probably shouldn't use orange. Let's use something we haven't used, blue. So we know we're gonna have a backup light there, we're gonna have a backup light here, we're gonna have lights on the front. Eventually there's gonna be some type of camp light or spotlight off to the side or floodlight off to the side. All of that's going to have to be controlled by the Garmin. So at that point, the Garmin you're supposed to mount as close to the battery as possible. Now the Garmin is going to be running off of the Goal Zero as well, but the issue is going to be that this cable is going to have to carry out underneath the hood somewhere so all those circuits can be fed. Because these are going to be exterior lights, it, would, it wouldn't make much sense to run all the wiring for those down the same troughs or the, the same sill plates when we can run them exterior of the vehicle where they're going to be anyway. So I don't know about the two side lights yet. That's kind of up in the air. I do know that we're gonna be installing two flush mount Baja design uh, lights in the rear and we can either run that off the Garmin uh, power switch, which let's say Let's say that lives over here on top of the original fuse box for the truck. So we're going to have to extend power cables off of this somehow, or even here. But it's basically gonna run underneath the console over and probably back out the exact same hole that these two cables come in to plug into the overland, or excuse me, to the Garmin power switch. And then from there, we'll have a harness that comes up to that. It'll split off to this and vice versa. This will probably run up the windshield and then over to that one and then at that point would come over here. Now it looks like I'm scribbling all over the place but hopefully you're getting the idea here. This is why you want to do a rough sketch so you kind of have an idea and you can always go back and erase lines, take things out and say no nope, that's not going to work right there. Maybe we want instead of putting the power switch box out there maybe it makes more sense to have it inside the truck and then run smaller wires out. Um, so at that point we would be running a harness to the back and then maybe up to the top of the rack from there. These are just some of the things that you need to be thinking about when you're planning out a system. It doesn't have to be super complicated. You can sketch this on a napkin, a piece of paper, whatever, use your, use your kids crayons. It doesn't really matter. You just need to get an idea of what is this going to look like and then once you kind of have an idea of, okay, yeah, the only access grommet is, say, right here, I know then that that wire has to go that far. So now I can go out to the truck with my tape measure, measure from the battery, all the way across the firewall, all the way down the side of the truck, and then give myself an extra foot or two here and there to, to make up the difference for the elevation changes in the truck. Because you're going to be coming from about waist high at the firewall down to the trough, which is about knee high running to the back, up over the fender in the back, so you're coming back up, you have to account for all that stuff. 
Um, sometimes things that help are to take a rope or a string and kind of run it along, roughly along where you're going to be running your cabling and you can mark it from there and then take a measurement of that stretched out and that way you're not pulling cable through everything. If you have excess cable, then just make the runs, pull everything through and cut them to length at that point in time. But if you're buying stuff as you go, um, it's, it's usually better to have somewhat of a game plan. And you can always come back in here on your sketch and say, okay, that wire there is 16 feet. This wire here or this group of wires here is four feet. And then make yourself a list, add everything up, and it'll give you a pretty good idea of what you need to get to, to roughly get started. So hopefully that makes sense. We need to make sure that these ends here are going to reach to where the solar panel is gonna terminate. 